Okay. So when we are talking about inner self, we have to remember one thing. Many times we are looking for the guru, whether you call universe, whether you call guru, whether you call God, whether you call higher self, in one way or the other, we are looking for someone outside of us to come and help. Remember, when we talked about Aham Brahmasmi means we all have a part, doesn't matter how small, but we have the same energy as the universe. That means we are a part of the universe. That means all the power, all the wisdom, knowledge, capabilities that we are looking for outside of us is actually inside of us. All we have to do is tap it. We have to find it. We have to acknowledge it. We have to make use of it. Like, you know, sometimes we say we don't have a user manual of our this human body. So we don't know. We think we are helpless. I'm in this situation. My, you know, sometimes we feel days are not going good because of whatever trouble you may be in. Whether physical, mental, emotional, like any of the things. Relationships. And then we look for outside. Someone else to come and help us. So, we have to know how to tap this energy inside. Our body, our mind, we are way more powerful than we have realized so far. Only thing is how to connect. So when we observe our breath, that means as you inhale, as you exhale, you are connecting with yourself. That means you are you are observing. You are not focused because there is a difference. The moment you try anything very hard, that means you are going away from it because you are in meditation, because your conscious mind is working on it. We have to work at the subconscious mind level. Subconscious mind is where all our habits are, which were primarily developed when we were 0 to 7 years of age. Because that age, we live in subconscious mind. means we are learning from everyone. What we see, we observe and we learn. So our habits are formed by the age we are seven and then we live in the conscious mind. We come out of subconscious mind. That's why for zero to seven years, the younger the child is, it is so easy because you are always looking inward. You don't have conscious mind. You have only subconscious. You don't know nothing. You have no ego. So whatever you see, you believe and you are learning from it. But as you become older, the ego, the me, the I, that part comes into play. I am so and so. Yes, I may be God of Paliwal, but that is my problem. That's the ego. That's my identity, local identity, physical identity. For the energy, it matters nothing. With our identity, we develop attachments. This is my house, this is their house. This is my friend, you know, their friend. Or my work, someone else's work. Or my car, his car. All those differentiation, different, you know, links comes because of this. That we have identity. If we can drop this identity, then there will be no difference between you and the other person. In this life, you know, when we are here as a human, it's very difficult. But that is what we are trying. If we can do better and better, then we can heal ourselves. The body knows how to heal. That is how people come out of any kind of you know, sometimes you may have some depression, sometimes you may have some physical ailment, you may have some critical or life-threatening issue, or some people have relationship issues, you know, fighting with everyone, or you may have 
uh, some wish that, oh, you know, I want to be a sports person or I want to learn music, dance, whatever that may be. So your inner self, sometimes we say, listen to your heart, listen to your inner voice. What does that mean? That means truly who you are. So that is inner self. Inner self will always guide you properly. But the thing is, in today's world, do we even know how to listen, how to connect with our inner self? And that is why meditation really helps. Now, is this the only way? No. You can do breathing techniques, what we call pranayam, or you can do yoga, which is also the word itself means union. So it is a union with your inner self, which is truly the power within you. So when we connect with our inner self, slowly and slowly you will realize your patience is increasing. Slowly and slowly your focus, your concentration is improving. And slowly and slowly you will see, yes, you can do anything in life, you can achieve anything in life. Why? Because now you are becoming one with your inner self. That means now you are kind of tapping that power. That is the fundamental thing. That why it is important to connect with our inner self. Because we have all the power. It's like, you know, you want to watch something or you want to make use of the TV you got and remote has all the features. But how many of us really know all the features of the remote? We know some basics. You can turn on, you can change the volume, channels and other things, but there are so many features which you may never use in your life. But if you open up the user manual, you will see all kinds of possibilities in terms of the different settings, different things it has. Most of the time we leave it to the factory setting and that's it. But it has the power, it has the capabilities, we just don't know. And that is exactly when what we do in meditation, we go inward and we find the answers. Otherwise, you are always looking for someone else to come and give you the answer. Now, there is nothing wrong in it. To have knowledge, like we go to school to get information from the teacher, because the teacher knows more about the subject, teacher is sharing the wisdom, that's okay. But if we only rely on the teacher, so imagine from grade one to 12, how many teachers you have to move around always with, if you have to have some answers all the subjects, different levels, not possible. That means you have to learn. And the most important thing for us is we ourselves, which, uh, which is not taught in any curriculum. And that is the reason why we end up in this situation that, you know, only when there is some trouble, only when there is a problem, we come into this wisdom or this path of spirituality, we call it. And of course, it has nothing to do with religion. It is purely how we human function. Now, same way the animals kingdom work. They don't go to school. They have a way of tapping to this wisdom. But because of our lifestyle, because of all what's happening around us, we don't. Most of the time, most of us. And that is the reason it is so important to connect to the inner self. Inner self, it has the same power. It connects you. It brings you to the level where you can help yourself. A very small example, when we breathe, you are connecting with inside. The noise, the thoughts are reducing. Why? Because you are observing your breath. If suppose you have a shoulder pain, you imagine as if your lungs are in your shoulders. So that means you start breathing from your nose to your shoulders. What will happen? Most of the cosmic energy that you intake during meditation will go to your shoulder. Whatever you observe gets the benefit. So if you are observing in your meditation your knees, most energy will flow to the knees. If you observe your heart, most energy will go to your heart. 
So you can divert most of the energy wherever you think you need most healing. If you say, I have no physical ailment, no issue, then leave it. Just breathe normally and let the energy go uniformly to your body. That is your inner self. That means just observing your breath, connecting it to you yourself as a guru. That means having that faith, having that trust that you have all the wisdom, you are just tapping it. And when we say the higher self, now we are talking about the universe outside of us. Now, outside of us does not mean you are talking about the neighbor, the work and this. No. That is the higher self means the main universe. Whichever way you may you know, feel it. We are connecting it to the higher self. During sleep, we do travel. You may have heard some people say astral travel, this, that, or dreams. And it is said that during travel, you know, our energies gets connected to our masters, to the main, uh, you know, you can say the universal energies. Which is okay, which is fine. And as you connect more and more to your inner self, that means you can sit calm, and peacefully in meditation. It doesn't matter. If, she, if some thoughts are coming, let them come. Don't worry. Thoughts will come. It will never be zero. But the impact, the effect, the disturbance these thoughts are creating will reduce slowly. And we connect to inner self better and better over the period of time. So give yourself some time, whether it is a couple of weeks, couple of months, you will see certain progress in your meditation. Don't expect I start today within a week. I have to sit with zero thoughts. That's wrong expectation. Thoughts will come. That's the purpose or the whole functioning of mind. So nothing wrong in it. But as we observe our breath more and more, that means you will have thought, go out, come back. Go out, come back. You will have much better experience in your meditation slowly and no meditation has zero value or zero benefit no even if a lot of thoughts are coming it's never zero it's always positive that means you do gain energy and it's all proven by science so it's now not like just a thought or just a statement now these things have been you know given in many different uh, civilizations in for thousands of years but now we look for science to validate, to believe in it. And even if it is so, uh, because that's what I did uh, four or five years ago, and that's okay because it is proven. So nothing wrong. And at least now you have trust and go for it. So again, inner self masters. And that's why before meditation, we uh, at least I highly recommend and I do. Uh, that's why it's in my guided part that we should tap. We should connect to our inner self. Make it an effort that you are looking inward and trust me, it will guide you. Sometimes it may guide you as intuition. Sometimes it may guide you as some image, some visual, some hint, whether in your dream or otherwise, and it will guide you in your whole life. The more, uh, you know, we connect to the inner self. So masters, I hear this was one request of the topic. So I hope this made it uh, clear what inner self is what higher self is, especially in meditation, it will really help you in having deeper, stronger connection in meditation. It is nothing but you yourself, uh, whether you call your masters, your guides, uh, and the more we connect with it, the more you have trust and faith in the whole system, in the whole process, the better meditation you will have, the better meditation you will have, the better energy connectivity you will have. Less disturbance by thoughts, and you will see your affirmations are coming true very soon. Your recovery from anything is uh, much faster. And you will start seeing magic in your life. And then you will believe more and more. Because you have seen in your life, it's no more a story of someone else telling you. It's your story. And that's why you have to keep your mind open, brain open, eyes, ears open. Any small thing happens with you. A small affirmation you had, it fulfills. 
recognize it, celebrate it, that yes, I had this affirmation, it came true within so much time or whatever. Because if you miss it, you will think nothing is happening, which may not be true. So masters, um, just wanted to cover on this topic. That's why there were no slides today. Uh, any question to clarify uh, further your doubts or if you have anything to share about this inner self and higher self, please feel free to unmute yourself, raise your hand uh, and ask or share. Thanks, brother. It was uh, very helpful, much clearer now. I think it should help all of us in uh, doing our meditation and probably better results. Thanks a lot for taking up this session. Welcome, Master Kosh.